look, in any economic downturn, the Central Valley is always the first place to suffer, the last place to recover. We've definitely seen that over the last year. I mean, the country sneezes, we catch a cold. We've had a lot of folks going on employment, uh, a lot of folks that really need help in order to buy groceries and, and pay rent. And this bill is really gonna do two things. First, it's gonna help us get this pandemic under control by accelerating our distribution efforts, making sure that everybody who needs a shot in their arm to keep them safe gets one. And then second, it's gonna provide much needed economic relief to help folks rebuild uh, after this pandemic. It's gonna do that by creating these one-time stimulus checks, uh, folks getting $1,400 uh, immediately. And then it's gonna make sure that we go even further by creating things like unemployment assistance and, and this child allowance. If we talk uh, a little bit about the, uh, the child uh, tax credit, the expansion of it, yeah. um, I know there's kind of a lot of confusion with people about checks that are going to be coming as part of it and then the rest of the taxes. You can just walk us through what people should expect. Yeah. Look, the way to think about this is an average family of five across the Central Valley is going to be getting $17,000 over the next year. Uh, that's going to be life changing to a lot of folks. And a lot of that is going to come even in the next couple of days. Uh, every person making less as a couple of less than $150,000 a year is going to be getting a $1,400 check for them, their spouse or partner, and every dependent that lives in their household. And so if you have a family of five, you're going to be getting you know, $10,000 right, right there. And then second, uh, there's going to be a child allowance. So just for every kid in your household younger than 17, uh, that's going to start coming online in July, and it's going to be coming every single month. Uh, I hope it's going to be coming every single month permanently, uh, but for now we have it until the rest of the year. And so if you have three kids, uh, you're going to be getting three thousand, at least three thousand dollars per kid uh, from now until the end of the year. Uh, so you know maybe you'll be making if you have you know two or three kids, 750 bucks a month, and then the remainder will be coming when you file your 2021 taxes. Is that and, simple or should I explain it? It's kind of complicated. So we <laughs> I know it's kind of complicated. I, I, so with, with the payments um, that are the monthly payments, how, how can people expect to receive those? It's the same way as stimulus yeah. payments are going to Absolutely. Out? So, the, so the child allowance is going to come the same way the stimulus checks come. So if you have your direct deposit on file with the IRS, you're going to be getting that direct deposit coming into your bank account as early as July, as soon as the IRS has their system set up. If the IRS doesn't have direct deposit information, then you can set it up. Even now, you can set up that direct deposit with the IRS, or you're going to be receiving uh, a check or, or debit card in the mail every single month uh, for the duration of the program. And um, uh, one, one, uh, area of concern that we've, that we've been reporting on a little bit is um, either really low income or even some homeless families who may not uh, file taxes, may not have ever even claimed the first or second stimulus payment. Yeah. Um, do you know about the process for them? Yeah. So if uh, the IRS doesn't have information on file, if they don't know where to contact you, or if you've moved uh, or changed your, your filing since the, the last tax deadline, then you have to update your information. And you can go to irs.gov slash coronavirus, uh, and you can work with them. You can also call my office, call me anytime, 209-579-5458. Uh, and we can also try to help you with the process uh, if you haven't filed taxes or if that information isn't up to date. You mentioned, uh a little earlier that you would like to see this permanent. Uh, do you think there's momentum for that? Uh, I hope so. Look, today, one in five kids in the Central Valley grows up in poverty. Uh, that shouldn't be the case. No matter who your parents are or where you're born, you should have a chance at the American dream. Uh, and this child allowance is going to cut that child poverty in half. Uh, that's going to be a big deal. I mean, if you have two kids, you're going to be getting 500 bucks a month from this program from now until the end of the year. And then you'll be getting uh, the remainder, another $3,000 when you file your taxes next year. Uh, and so that's going to be a good deal. And I really hope we were able to make sure that this is not a program that, that terminates in December. And I believe there's some strong bipartisan support uh, to continue it. 
Can you you talk about um, what you've heard from families, what this means for them, and then also for the economy as a whole in the in the Central Valley? This is going to mean so much. I mean, I talked uh, to a family in Modesto the other day, and you know, the dad lost his job. Uh, he couldn't pay rent, so we ended up getting evicted from his home. Now him, his wife, and their kids are living out of their car. Uh, this is going to allow that man to make sure that they're finding their way back into permanent housing. He can find his way back into the workforce. His kids can find their way back into school and into the classroom. Uh, and there's so many folks that have been in that situation through no fault of their own, fault of their own, just because of where this pandemic has left our economy. And so this is going to allow us not just to get this vaccine uh, distributed and to get this pandemic under control, it's going to allow us to actually repair so much of the damage that this uh, ha epidemic has has really wrought across our community. Yeah, so let's uh, talk about two two other parts of the of the bill. First, the fourteen hundred dollars stimulus checks. Um, we've heard uh, from some banks that are it's questionable. I guess they they claim they're not holding the money. Um, but they're not paying it out right away. Some people got paid over the weekend. Some people are being told they got to wait till, till Wednesday. Um, what do you think of the rollout so far with, with the, those checks? Look, uh, I think those checks should have gone out yesterday. <laughs> I think people need the money. Uh, so many folks have been waiting for this for months. I mean, I would have liked this relief bill to have happened six months ago. It was certainly necessary six months ago when we knew what needed to happen. Uh, so I hope that we're able to get that out the door as soon as possible. I know some banks have different decisions on that distribution. Uh, and then there's also folks that don't have direct deposit where they're going to be waiting for that check to come from the Treasury Department. Uh, and so I think it's really important that we make sure that every payment goes out the door as soon as possible. So people are able to buy those groceries, people are able to pay that rent uh, as soon as they can. And if you're having any trouble with your stimulus payments, please contact me, contact my office, harder.house.gov. Uh, we're here to help. Um, and then uh, the un unemployment benefits, they got, uh, they're extended. There's the $300 uh, um, boost. Um, do you think it's, it's enough for, for uh, to help unemployed people? I hope so. Look, I mean, by far the best thing that we can do is make sure that people are getting back to work. And the sooner that we get folks vaccinated, the sooner folks can get off of unemployment and get back to their jobs. That's by far the best answer here. Uh, and especially true because the California Unemployment Office, EDD, has had so many problems over the last year. But there is money in this bill to not only continue that supplemental unemployment insurance, but also uh, to make sure that we can fix California unemployment. It's going to make sure that we can hire more callers for their call center so they can actually pick up the phone and help people who need help. It's money to make sure that they can fix their antiquated computer systems and processes so they can hopefully make sure that they can identify fraud uh, and not confuse it with legitimate claims. And then third, there's also support in this bill to forgive uh, unemployment from taxes. And that's a big deal because as we're headed towards tax season, um, Every uh, less than if you have made less than ten thousand dollars, if you have benefited from less than ten thousand dollars of unemployment insurance, that will all be forgiven under this legislation. You won't have to pay taxes, which is just common sense. I mean, if your neighbor comes and asks you for help, you don't give it to him, and then next day go and ask him for for ten or twenty percent of that back. Uh, that doesn't make any sense, and this bill fixes that tax obligation for so many people that have been on unemployment for the past year. I want to ask you. Uh... The uh, um, coronavirus kind of brought about the PUA program, which brought some unemployment relief to people who before didn't receive any help. Yeah. Um, do you think there's, uh, has there been any talk uh, moving forward about creating some sort of a program to help uh, self-employed and contract workers um, during difficult times? I think we need to do a top to bottom reform of the way that we do unemployment across California and across this country, because it's clear that it has not worked. Uh, I have heard from so many people uh, about all of the failures of our own unemployment office, both in terms of who is eligible, uh, as well as just in terms of the people who are eligible getting the help that they need. I mean, I talked to one woman who told me that she calls California's unemployment office up to 100 times a day. 
And in the six week span where she was calling a hundred times a day, not once did she talk to a single human being. That's, that's the situation that we have with our unemployment office. And so it's clear there need to be pretty systematic changes. I do think that as part of the changes to unemployment going forward, we need to make sure that everyone who has a job is eligible, uh, not just folks who work in one particular company. If you're self-employed or you're an independent contractor or you have your hours cut from 20 hours to zero, uh, you should still be eligible for the same unemployment benefits as anybody else. And that's one of the fixes that we're gonna have to make to the system going forward. Okay, and then uh, just uh, really quick, I would uh, like to touch also on vaccines. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what, what specifically uh, is in the bill? What, what is it gonna mean for uh, getting shots to people? Yeah, this is gonna make sure that people get vaccines faster. It's gonna do that by two ways. First is there's more money here to purchase more vaccines and improve the amount of supply, especially the supply coming to the Central Valley because we haven't necessarily always gotten our fair share of vaccines over uh, the past few months. And then second, there's a lot of support here to hire more workers and healthcare workers. Uh, and that's really important because when we were at 0% ICU bed capacity in the Central Valley, it's not because we didn't have the physical bed space, it's because we didn't have the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare workers to make sure that folks could need help. And as we expand distribution efforts, that's gonna be more important. It's more important to make sure that we have qualified people to distribute this vaccine and get shots into arms ASAP. And this bill provides for 100,000 new community health workers across the country. Many of those are going to be coming to our area. Uh, and that's going to be really important because it's going to make sure that we can get this pandemic under control even faster. All right, my uh, last question for you here. Um, you were, you, you've been critical of the vaccine, uh, uh, I guess, the amount of vaccine available in the Central Valley. Do you feel like it's improved at all in the last few weeks? Um, since you first started raising concerns? It has gotten better. But look, this should be a very simple process. The vaccines should go to the areas that need the help the most. They shouldn't go to the wealthiest counties. They shouldn't go to the counties that are most politically connected. They should go to the folks that have been working frontline jobs for the past year. Uh, that's what's right. Uh, and so, unfortunately, that's not what happened early on. Uh, those vaccines were, were not going, they were disproportionately not going to the Central Valley. Uh, I think the governor has made some changes, uh, and that's been, frankly, long overdue. But I do think we have seen some real improvements uh, in vaccine supply. The Central Valley is now getting uh, more vaccines, and, and that problem is, is, is getting uh, slowly but surely a little bit better. And then also, we've worked hand in hand with the federal government to, to bypass the state and get vaccines directly into community health centers across the valley. So we've been, uh, Golden Valley Health uh, uh, Centers just announced uh, last week, uh, we're working in partnership with them to get vaccines directly uh, from the, the, the HRSA, the, the Health Resources uh, um, Office nationally, uh, which is gonna make sure that those vaccines go directly to the Central Valley. 